Hi guys, welcome to another Oakley Paws video. Today I'm going to be showing off my bi-directional, infinitely expandable, one-wide shift register. And yes, I know that sounded like a bunch of Chinese or Japanese coming out of my mouth, but I swear it's English. Now I know there's going to be some redstone nerd in the comment section down below saying that it doesn't meet those standards, and I really don't care, because I think it does personally meet those standards that I have just set with that crazy long title. So what that title basically means is one wide, each one of these modules is one wide, so you can stack them next to each other just like that. Bidirectional means I can shift it both ways, the bits, which means I can just move them one block to the left or to the right. And I know this may seem crazy, but infinitely expandable means I can just make this infinitely long. So by flicking this lever, this just shifts all those bits one to the right, as you can tell, and I can do this as much as I want. I know this is crazy, right? You're probably like, Drake, this is so stupid. But like, actually, I think this is actually kind of important for redstone because of how small this thing actually is. And on this side, I can just shift it one to the left every time I flick it. And let me just do this a few times to show you just shifting it to the left. Again, technically speaking, I can repeat this process infinitely many times, but by the way mine works, it's gonna have to stop eventually at the end of either side. I real quickly want to say sorry for like all the glitches and visuals because I'm trying another way to record my videos and it's kind of, it's, you know, it's iffy. Uh, yeah, this is the entire redstone for the build right here. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I know. This is crazy, right? Now, actually, a lot of this is not needed. I just did this with the visual so you wouldn't actually be able to see a big part of it because of my uh, quote unquote big reveal. So I'm real quickly just removing all the unnecessary parts. And that leaves us with this majestic thing right here. Now you can tell why the redstone nerds would be mad at me because this uses flying machines. But each individual cell is 1x4x5, so that's kind of hard to beat. And again, if you want this to be longer, just keep stacking more of these next to each other. And these flying machines right here, you can stack them next to each other too. Now the reason the redstone nerds don't be mad at me is because right at the bottom here is how I stored the data using redstone blocks. And the problem is with that, you can only use a redstone block with pistons pushing it in or out. And normally when you have the shift registers, you use redstone dust so you can do that infinitely many times and it's easier to reset and you're not having to use a certain amount of blocks for this to work. But as you can tell, if I just put a redstone block at the bottom, it basically acts like it's shifting something when I move the flying machine left or right one. And obviously if I add more bits like this, it's the same amount of blocks the flying machine's carrying, so it works just fine. And then if I just go to the other side, it just shifts it back the other way, acting like it's shifting the bits back to the right one. Now if we just carry this concept to multiple flying machines like this, it works perfectly fine. One drawback of this is it works perfectly fine to place redstone blocks other than this one spot right here. Now the solution to this actually is just to place a barrel right under that piston and then just place a random item in that barrel. You might consider this a weird solution to the problem, but if you just go like this and put a comparator facing out from the barrel, now you have a signal also, but it doesn't interfere with the piston. Sadly, as you might realize, it might get more annoying to actually switch signals and stuff like that, but it works perfectly fine. And also for this representation, I have to put a block because redstone signal strength goes through blocks like that, so just doing this fixes it for the representation purposes. And as you can tell, this workaround just fixes the redstone block problem the only thing is you can tell it takes up more space obviously next problem and how to address it if you do hit the max out here it actually will break the machine if you just keep going past the limit like this as you can tell on the right i exceeded the limit and the left one works fine because it's still in the center but the one that went outside of it is not responding to anything it's stuck on the edge just like this the way to prevent this is actually quite simple just break these two blocks right here on the right side and then on the way on the left right at the end here just break these two blocks and that will fix it and now it cannot exceed the max and if we try just like this it's not going to do anything because guess what it can't receive a signal so it stays max just like this and if we do it again obviously they're going to stay the same and they're going to just stay flat and not move anywhere because they've exceeded the max and then if we ever send a signal on the other side to go back they're going to work perfectly fine before i go into the tutorial on how to make this thing can you guys please consider maybe subscribing if you found this video helpful so far because videos like this take forever to design and make with that out of the way i guess if you wanted to build this in survival these are the materials you're going to need so each one wide module is going to need nine observers for terracotta of your choice and two repeaters and then at the ends obviously you're going to need a lever on each end and the flying machine itself that works for every seven blocks is going to be 12 slime blocks or 12 honey blocks depending on which way you go you have to inner do them do slime then honey then slime then honey then you're going to need two pistons and two sticky pistons per flying machine and then one normal block so starting in the sky what we're going to do is just break that right there and just put an observer just like this and then we're going to have an observer facing the side of this one just like this 
and then have one under it facing up just like that and then have another observer facing out and on top of that observer we're going to have a repeater facing away set to four ticks and now you're actually already halfway done with the module that makes it go left or right because this right here will actually make it go one direction and now to make it go the other direction we're going to place an observer facing the opposite direction on top of this one and then have two of them facing inward just like that and then we're going to go back to this observer and place one facing in just like that and then another one facing out and then set this repeater to three ticks and after we place down these terracotta this is the entire design to make it move both directions without the flying machine and then you just place the lever on this side like that and then you place the lever on this side or i'm just gonna continue on this line right here this is where the line normally would go and make sure all the observers are facing the same way i was just doing this so i can make it out real quick all the way out here but they have to be going the same direction if they're not this entire thing will actually send a signal across now i'm not actually going to make all the modules again but this is just how the wires would normally look this is basically the part that carries on and then these are each individual cell right here okay i'm just going to get rid of these now i was just showing that as representation of where the signals get carried down now i'm just going to build this wall out real quick just so like you can imagine that if this went on for a while where you'd place the flying machines now to build the flying machine you're just going to place a piston like this it's going to go right into a block and then like this you're just going to go up and you're going to place a sticky piston then a normal piston and then over here you're going to place a sticky piston like that and this is the piston configuration now just place the slime blocks in the spots that i show right here as you can see the right side should kind of look like a squiggly line that goes a little longer at the end and then to do the left side all you got to do is just place a slime block here another one here and then you just got to bridge up a little bit like this and then make like an l kind of and that's just the flying module done right there now finally any piston pushable blocks you can just place on the bottom just like this as long as they stick if they're terracotta obviously they won't stick to the slime blocks i'm just placing observers in this example like this that will work fine and that kind of just wraps up the video thank you guys so much for watching this video it's crazy that people actually asked that they wanted me in their videos thank you to everyone who actually did say that i had a great time once those videos are out i will release them down in the description down below you should definitely go check them out and have a great rest of your day